Hello darlings, I am Cassandra. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming. For those of you who are new to my channel, child, let me introduce you to the Jungle Beauty Goddesses, the life-size fabric sculpture dolls you see sitting behind me. I created these dolls myself and as I was sewing them, they would not stop talking to me and this led to my Jungle Beauty Goddess book series. And so far I have book one, two, and three. In today's video, I am going to read you a portion of chapter one in book two. So this is the cover for book two, Aquatic Ball, I believe. Yes, Aquatic Ball. So we are going to, so child, go and get yourself some tea, some coffee, um, a nice, you know, cup of, nice cup of lemonade or wine or whatever you do, darling, and just chillax for a moment and I am going to read you some of chapter one. Um, this is author reads their own book, right? So let's go ahead. So we're going to, the first chapter is Eve's sister. Eve's sister. Did you focus? I'm so excited. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. He could not get full, no matter how much he tried to gulp the sweet, sticky juices that tasted like honey, walnut butter, basil, and baked sweet black cherries covered in vanilla sauce on sautéed white fish. He kept licking the crevices of the meat, flicking his tongue over its small, fleshy, protruding, soft tip as, as it swelled throbbed and glistened from his saliva. He grunted and moaned as he stuck his tongue as deep as it would go into his cavity, slurping its plump, thick walls that reminded him of fresh fish cooked on an open fire with an ice-cold beer. She was so delicious. He didn't know if he should eat her in a sushi roll, fry her in butter, or both. His back was speckled with red cut marks from her scaly legs wrapped around his torso as he pressed his body weight into the opening of her being. While he pounded and pounded inside of her, she paddled his flabby ass with her tails as he braced himself by squeezing both of her melon-sized breasts as hard as he could. Ripples and waves of intense pleasure exploded from his body. He felt himself drowning to death. Awakened by his own gasp for air, he swiftly sat up in bed, heaving and breathing hard to try to catch his breath. He ran his fingers through his mostly white, long, dirty beard as his stringy, greasy hair that touched his shoulders after taking a deep breath, his fingers fumbled through some old fish bones, crumbled up papers, orange pillings, and other garbage on his nightstand as he searched for a half-smoked cigar and lighter. While lighting his cigar, he noticed the black, thick dirt under his two long fingernails. He decided to take a moment to bite them off with his teeth and spit them across his small, cramped sleeping quarters like grape seeds with the rest of them. Before inhaling a long, passionate puff of smoke from a cigar that filled his soul and excited and exited through the thick, crusty hairs in his nose like twin smoking chimneys. He flinched at the smoldering stench of funk filth and raunchy old musk emanating from his own body. <laughs> to lighten the mood, he took a swig of some moonshine that was sitting on the floor next to his bed. He took a moment to appreciate the slow simmering hot burn of the booze sliding down his throat, heating up his chest walls and settling into his belly to give him the strength to make it through another day of hell on earth. 
His riverboat home gently rocked back and forth, causing his poorly attached drawings of topless mermaids with single and twin tails to shift back and forth on the wall. The only spotless area was a tiny secret room off to the side, neatly covered with pictures, artifacts, and newspaper clippings of the jungle beauty goddesses who allegedly visited Earth over 20 years ago. The smallest rectangular wall was covered from top to bottom with awards, plaques, certificates, and trophies. On several of the pictures, he was flanked by the presidents of the United States, world leaders, and dignitaries from every inch of the globe. Too much fame, too much glory, and too many women. Previously acclaimed paleontologist Dr. Peter L. Roy was now the laughing stock of the whole world. He walked upstairs to the deck of his riverboat and peered into the sea caves filled with minerals that sparkled from the beaming sun that softly highlighted its natural beauty. His tanned, wrinkled face welcomed the cool morning breeze as he took a long, deep breath. While listening to the seagulls, he watched the glistening ripples dance across the sea. How did I end up here, he murmured from his trance. While pacing back and forth on his deck and tersely sm smacking himself between his eyes with the bottom palm of his hand, Ugh. Peter pounded, pondered the memory over and over and over and over again out loud. The jungle beauty goddesses were chained to the examination tables in a top secret location under the most advanced surveillance technology available to humankind by men of the highest security clearance in the world. I don't understand how the hell they escaped. Of all the valuable, intriguing, and interesting items in the Smithsonian Museum, why did they only take the skeletal remains of Earth's oldest f female, Eve? Why would this be of value to them? Who are they? Why did they really come to Earth? And what the hell do they want from humans? Peter went back inside of his boathouse and cooked his favorite breakfast. Two scrambled eggs, toast, fried fish, and grits with jalapeno peppers and cheddar cheese. Next to moonshine, dark roasted strong coffee with a dollop of cream was his favorite drink. Before sitting down to eat, he reached into the top shelf of his kitchen cabinet to get a newspaper clipping out of a plastic bin from a stack of old newspapers and magazines. While eating his breakfast, he read from the star opulent global newspaper for the hundredth time. The article he read it was his interview with his star opulent. And he says, I don't believe in God. In fact, I don't believe in much of anything. Believing is for fools, dreamers, children, and magicians, of which I am none of the above. I am going to tell you a story of truth, mystery, fantasy, and destruction. My story of how I was the most famous and wealthiest paleontologist in the whole world and lost it all. Can you even imagine earning and losing $2.7 billion in one lifetime? It's much, e it's much easier than you think, darling. The darling is my part. I grew up in an extremely religious home. My father was a preacher and my mother was a homemaker. We went to church almost every day. When my mother wasn't cooking, doing laundry, or cleaning up 
cleaning up after my three brothers and me, she was teaching Bible study. Not only did both of my parents believe in the Bible verbatim, they also believed that if you weren't a Christian, you were subhuman and doomed for hell, even if you were a good person. I can tell you now, if I was a cop in the sky who could see everything and everyone at every single moment, I would definitely find many more interesting things to do with my time than judge and condemn other people. I mean, can you imagine being able to see all of the beautiful naked women in the world but choosing to focus on some hungry guy who stole a candy bar? For the most part, I tried my best never to let my parents know that I didn't believe in a man in the sky with a long beard and an even longer finger judging and pointing to which people who would be assigned to hell for all of eternity. In fact, I used to go out of my way to pretend to have the Holy Ghost at least twice a month when my parents would question my faith in God over some dumb comment I would make during dinner conversation about God, obedience, and church. I can't believe that seemingly normal, rational, mentally healthy people could believe in such ridiculous religious tales. I must admit that I am both fascinated and appalled by many of the stories in the Bible, but Adam and Eve is my favorite. I remember learning about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when I was about six years old in Sunday school. This is the story that made me curious about the first humans who roamed the earth, the new picture of Eve with the branches covering her breast and lady parts. This, this picture did something to me that I didn't understand when I was a kid. But now looking back as an adult, I was obviously aroused by Eve's mass nudity. However, if you really think about it, she was actually my first pinup girl. I remember the Sunday school teacher telling us some, some story about how God made Adam and he was so lonely um, given that he was the only human on earth. So God decides to put him to sleep and make a woman out of his rib to, to be his companion. The woman, Eve, listens to a serpent who beguiles her into eating from the one and only tree that God forbade, <clears throat> forbade them to eat from, the tree of knowledge. They ate the fruit and realized that they were butt naked and could, and could have hot, nasty sex behind the garden bushes. God gets pissed off and punishes them by expelling them from the lush garden of eating. For Adam, this meant no more easy living by, the, by picking a handful of fruits and vegetables from the garden of plenty, that he would have to toil the soil and earn his own living. And for Eve, her punishment would be pain and suffering from childbirth, the, pen, the penalty for getting down and dirty with Adam without protection. Oh yeah, one more thing. My favorite. They could no longer live forever. Death would become the ultimate destiny, destiny for all of humankind. This is the story that changed my life and shaped my entire worldview. Growing up in a home where my mother was the only female in the house who took care of five males without ever complaining about her role as a wife and a mother made me think, if indeed there was ever such a being as a god, she would definitely be a woman. I love my father and my brothers, but I would give my life for, to my mother. I would give my life for my mother. She is the only saint I know. After learning about Adam and Eve, I became obsessed with finding Eve, life giver and the first woman to roam earth. I wanted to learn as much as I could about her so that I could avenge her reputation. In some twisted way, I wanted to hear her side of the story. This is why I decided to become a paleontologist. Paleontology is the evolutionary study of the symbiotic relationship between Earth and all of its life forms from around the world by studying their fossils. 
since I don't believe in things that I, do, that I can't touch or see, this was the perfect field of study for me. After graduating with top honors from high school, I decided to get my undergraduate degree in chemistry from the University of Cambridge. It wasn't so much because of their prestigious program as it was my need to get away from my parents. It gave me a legitimate excuse to not have to meet them at church on Sundays. I further indulged my addiction to knowledge and education by earning three master's degrees from Stanford University, one in mathematics, one in geology, and one in biology. I completed my PhD from Harvard University in paleontology. As luck would have it, I was a part of the research team that found Earth's oldest female human remains in the Afar Desert. It was my idea to name her Eve. Our mutual thirst for knowledge have finally brought Eve and I together. I wrote a book about my research entitled, If Eve's Bones Could Talk. I have several paintings and drawings that I created from my fantasy of what she might have looked like. There were so many factors about Eve's skeleton that didn't make sense. She was clearly anatomically of the Homo sapiens species, but her neck was freakishly long. Secondly, she was over 17 feet tall. The scientific community decided not to report this because they thought that it would cause a public uproar about the possibility of aliens visiting the planet, planet Earth. And the third factor that intrigued me about Eve's skeleton is that there have been no other excavations of Homo sapiens fossils around the world. They look similar in height or neck length. In my postgraduate work at Harvard University, I couldn't develop a theory because I had too many unanswered questions. Was Eve really an alien stranded on Earth? If so, why did her family leave her behind? What planet did she originate from? How did she die? Are there other beings who look like her? Does she have a male counterpart? And if so, why haven't we found any male fossils with the same anatomy? I should have titled my book, Where the Hell is Adam? <laughs> I was married three times. My first wife, Layla, died giving birth to our deceased son, Peter L. Roy Jr. My parents said that maybe God was angry with me for not attending church on Sundays, and this is why he took my wife and son. They begged me to go to church and beg for his forgiveness, for God's forgiveness. I told my parents for the first time in my life that I didn't believe in God. And if there was such a supreme being, he took my wife and child and we were more than even. She has been the one and only true love of my life. I married my second wife to get over the death of my first wife. It's sad but true. Melinda was extremely organized. She cooked elaborate meals for dinner and our house was immaculate. I wasn't in love with her, but I needed her, and sometimes it's difficult to distinguish the difference between love and need. I attribute my academic success at Harvard to Melinda. She walked, um, sorry, she walked in on me having sex with a research assistant in our marital bed. I mean, I was surprised that she was home early from shopping, but I wasn't shocked. I asked her to join us. She left me for good. I married my third wife, Rhonda, because after getting my PhD from Harvard, I found that it is much easier for married men to get promoted and join the upper echelons of society. I learned the hard way that after the age of 35, single men are looked down upon. People think that you are gay or a pedophile or suspiciously creepy in a body in the trunk kind of way. Society has more respect for married men who cheat on their wives than a single man who is sexually faithful to his girlfriend. I wasn't particularly attracted to Rhonda, but she had really nice tits and she knew how to throw an unforgettable dinner party. Technically, we are still married, but I have no idea where she is. After my third stint in rehab, she told me she was pregnant. 
I begged her to get an abortion because no kid deserves to have me as a father. She left me and I don't know if I'm a father or not. My personal life was nothing to brag about, but my career as a paleontologist was stellar. I was looking for that big break in my career that would immortalize my name amongst among Earth's history. Earthquakes were sh happening all over the world. Many people believed that global warming was finally setting the Earth on fire and the world was coming to an end. Scientists were speculating that Earth might have been under attack by aliens. Religious zealots, including my parents, were pick picketing, rejoicing, and chanting, embrace the second coming. New stations from around the world were reporting sightings of six jungle-looking women as tall as trees riding on the backs of giant wild animals traveling in a caravan. Every description of the jungle-looking women emphasized their height and long necks. It could have been a combination of the bottle of scotch that I was drinking, the pot I was smoking, or both. But whatever it was, something told me that Eve's sisters were here on Earth. I called the International Space Investigation Bureau and told them about my research on Eve's fossils. I told them that I had a hunch that these aliens would eventually head to the Smithsonian Museum in search of the remains of Earth's oldest female. I was given a special NASA team to be on standby at the museum. We welded three six feet long examination tables together with metal chains and locks for each of the jungle women. They showed up, we captured them, my life changed forever. I don't want to bore you with the intricate details, but when my research team and I asked their names, where were they from and why were they here, they said that their names were Katara, Kalahari, Namib, Chalbi, Sinai, and Sahara. They said that they that collectively they were to, they were to be addressed as the jungle beauty goddesses. They alleged that Earth's deserts are named after them. But that wasn't the most insane thing that they said by far. They claimed that their father, Demeter, gave them planet Earth as a birthday present to develop and create life forms. They told us that they were creatresses, rulers, guardians, and protectors of Earth. I should be ashamed to say this, but I'm not. Maybe a smidge. My team and I conducted some pretty atrocious, inhumane, and unethical experiment, experiments on these so-called jungle beauty goddesses. I am sure they were seeing, I am sure they were seeing anything so that we would leave them alone. One of our top security guards raped one of the sisters. Our surveillance cameras caught it on tape. We showed it to the elite group of international leaders and they bought it from us from our, for around $200 million. This was just the start of the money that I made off of the jungle beauty goddesses. The lab specimens that my team and I collected from these giant women had, had a miraculous chemical com had a miraculous chemical compound. Their blood looked like pink, shimmery, fluffy baby lotion with a sweet floral scent. A few of my research people were messing around. We accidentally spilled some of the pink stuff out of the tube and it turned into a fine, glittery golden dust. The guard who raped one of the sisters obtained a gash in his thigh from the barbed wire chains on the lab table after he jumped down from raping her. He was in the lab when the blood spilled from the tube vanished into golden dust and filled the air in the room. It immediately healed his wounded leg. Another one of my research team members had just been diagnosed with prostate cancer, but when he went, and went to the doctor the next day, there were no signs of cancer. There were other small things that happened that day as well, 
like my migraine headache from my hangover instantly went away, but it's minor in comparison to the other stuff. We could have used their blood to cure a lot of illnesses and diseases affecting the poor around the world, but hey, I'm an American. I'm a capitalist. There is no money in helping poor people. We use the blood to help the richest among the richest who could afford it. Now that I'm back on it, now that I think back on it, we probably could have used it to clear pollution, world hunger, AIDS, but hey, what can I say? 2020 hindsight is 2020 I made a superhero type jungle beauty goddess comic book of the giant women my marketing team and I made video games dolls and a weekly series about the jungle beauty goddesses I put their image on t-shirts school supplies mugs you name it every year I had a jungle beauty goddess talent pageant and play to bring the still images to life, every little girl in America was dressed as one of the jungle beauty goddesses for Halloween. I was world famous, an international media king. I was praised for injecting cultural diversity into the white male dominated realm of superheroes. We kept the jungle, we kept the jungle girls captive for a little over two weeks. We have no idea how they escaped. We searched the surveillance tapes from every angle possible, and I swear to you, given that I don't believe in God, and it probably doesn't mean anything to you, but you must believe me on my mother's life, they disappeared into thin air. After they left the after they left, the erratic weather stopped, but five years later the world started to devolve instead of evolving. Global warming ended and vegetation was starting to grow in barren areas that had been lifeless for centuries. Due to climatic changes, we needed more people to work in fields. Manual labor was quickly becoming popular again. Massive floods caused, caused most of the earth to lose its electricity. Instead of the earth being approximately 30% land and 70% water, from my estimates, it appeared that the planet's landscape was between 25 to 27 percent, slowly and steadily sinking into the seas, the lakes, the rivers, and the oceans. The International Environmental Governmental Department executed a top secret mission to cover up the changes that were taking place on planet Earth, develop a scientific theoretical explanation for shrinking landscapes, and create a reasonable strategy to reverse the damages from the massive floods. I gave an interview to the Star Opulent News stating that due to the de-evolutionary de changes, to, changes to the earth that a new species that was better able to adapt to earth's aquatic environment would emerge and take over the planet. This is what I thought I said but the actual interview went a little bit went something like this and this is the actual interview so this is he you know in the book he's explaining what happened but this is how, what the actual interview for the star opulent publication this is how it went oh quack dr peter elroy sees aliens and mermaids by Amanda Blue. Renowned paleontologist Dr. Peter L. Roy, famous for capturing and creating an industry fortune around the jungle beauty goddess aliens who managed to vanish from earth into thin air, now claims to have now claims to have had sex with twin toe mermaids. Ten years ago, citizens around the world reported descriptions of six seventeen feet tall women dressed in lion cloths with matching bikini like tops adorned with bangles around their disproportionately long necks were traveling in a caravan caravan riding jungle animals due to his recent claim of frequently seeing single and twin tail mermaids near sea caves it is now believed that dr roy digitally created pictures of the alleged jungle beauty goddess aliens based on media descriptions. 
Dr. Roy was the lead Harvard educated paleontologist who allegedly found the fossils of the oldest Homo sapiens female remains and named her, knee, named her Eve. Some scientists are questioning the validity of his claim, given that the fossil appeared to be artificially altered to reduce its size. It is now believed that the missing fossil was that of some type of extinct animal. Several scientists have requested to analyze the Eve fossil, supposedly discovered in the Afar Desert. When asked about the whereabouts of the fossil, Dr. Roy stated, I believe that the real reason that the jungle beauty goddess aliens came to Earth was to capture their, their sister Eve's remains. Eve's fossil disappeared around the same time that the six jungle beauty goddess sisters vanished from Earth. Star Opulent Magazine Why do you believe that, that Eve's fossil is the remains of the jungle beauty goddess's sister? Dr. Roy they have the exact same anatomy, abnormally long necks, and they are around 17 feet tall. Star opulent. According to news sources, you have been in re rehab at least three times for substance and alcohol abuse. Is this true? Secondly, did you receive, did you deceive the public into believing that you captured the jungle beauty goddess aliens to amass a fortune of wealth following the earthquakes and uncertain future of humanity? Dr. Roy, are you an opportunist? Dr. Roy, I'm a lot of things. Yes, I am absolutely an alcoholic. I have no intention to stop drinking in this lifetime. Yes, I am an opportunist. I emotionally abused two of my three wives and I only married them to further my career. My team and I captured the jungle beauty goddesses and examined them in our lab. We sold their rape sex tape to international world leaders for over $200 million. Hey, Miss Blue, um, I'm very offended by this interview. I have an impeccable, impeccable reputation. I'm a man of truth. I may be disgusting. I may be immoral. I may be eccentric. But I always tell the truth. You can ask me anything and I will tell you the truth. Star Opulent. Dr. Roy, is it true? that the International Space Investigation Bureau has been trying to hide from the public why Earth's landscape is flooding and declining. Dr. P. L. Roy I don't think the shrinking landscape should be human's biggest concern. This is a minuscule problem compared to the epigenetic changes that are giving mermaids an environmental advantage. Their population is increasing while the human population is decreasing. If things continue at this rate, mermaids will, be, will definitely be the dominant species on Earth. Star Opulent Dr. Roy, are you telling me that mermaids are real? Dr. Roy Not only are they real, I have had sex with them. I have had sex with several twin tail mermaids around the world. Best sex I ever had in my life. Star Opulent. Dr. Roy, have you been drinking? Dr. Roy, not yet. I had planned to get a drink before breakfast after this interview. Would you like to accompany me? Would you like to accompany me? Star Opulent. No, sir, thank you for this interview. I sincerely pray that you get the help that you need and deserve. A few months after this interview, Dr. Roy was admitted to a mental health facility. Many world leaders have given their well wishes and regrets for Mr. Roy's unfortunate health condition. When asked about an alien rape sex tape, they responded that such a ludicrous claim could not have been dignified with a response. Dr. Roy was sued for fraud. He is now penniless 
His whereabouts are unknown. He will always be remembered for the entertaining the world with his zany stories about the jungle beauty goddesses. And this ends chapter one. Chapter one and the jungle beauty goddesses aquatic ball. Leave a comment and the leave a comment below on what you liked about the story, what you find interesting, and stay tuned for chapter two. Thank you so much for watching.